In the Gospel of Matthew, three magi, commonly called wise men, visit Jesus in Bethlehem to worship him. In another video, I discuss the history of the magi as religious functionaries in the Persian Empire, and how the word forms the root of our English words magic and magician. But what about their gifts? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Most modern audiences know what gold is. You know, that heavy, shiny metal that investors run to in volatile markets. But for ancient audiences, they would have recognized frankincense and myrrh for what they were. Extremely expensive luxury items with a huge range of religious uses, from animal sacrifices to funerals and even magical spells. Frankincense and myrrh are dried resins from the plants in the Boswellia and Camophora genuses, flowering plants native to the Arabian Peninsula. They were harvested by cutting the bark of the tree and allowing the resin to ooze out and harden. A week later you would come back and scrape the hardened resin crystals off the plant. In the Greco-Roman world, frankincense and myrrh were luxury commodities that were shipped all over the Roman Empire. In in fact, the Roman geographer Pliny the Elder estimated that between 1,300 and 1,700 tons of the stuff was shipped annually into the Roman Empire each year, though now you can just buy it on Amazon. But what did people use it for? One of the primary uses of frankincense in particular was burning it with animal sacrifices as a fragrant incense. In fact, burning incense was so intensely associated with pagan sacrifice that early Christian leaders such as Tertullian forbade any Christians from selling frankincense, because then they would be complicit to demonic activity. Frankincense and myrrh also made an appearance at Roman funerals. If you were a really rich, upper-class Roman, you could show off how rich you were even after death by burning tons of frankincense. We are told by the Roman historian Suetonius that Nero burned tons of frankincense for his wife's funeral. Myrrh had a lot of similar uses to frankincense. It was also burned at animal sacrifices, it was also burned at funerals, but it was particularly associated with death rituals. The ancient Egyptians would use it during the embalming process of mummies. In the Gospel of John, Jesus' body itself was prepared for burial with myrrh. But finally, and this is my favorite use, frankincense and myrrh were commonly used in magical ritual. In my favorite compendium of ancient magic, the Greek magical papyri, frankincense and myrrh appears everywhere. One spell, which essentially is a request for a god to send you an oracle through a dream, calls for the practitioner to light an offering of frankincense and to carry it around while chanting to the gods. So from these examples, we can see that that fragrant incense was deeply tied to divinity in the minds of ancient people. For example, fragrance could signal divine presence. Ancient authors frequently described gods as smelling like perfume, and inhaling this perfume could mean embodying the gods in a very visceral way. But moreover, the scholar Susan Ashbrook Harvey, who wrote the definitive book on fragrance in late antiquity, argues how burning fragrant incense was also a primary way that the ancients believed they could communicate with the gods. Burning incense releases smoke into the air, which would float up to the gods. The Roman author Lucian describes it best. A godly steam and for godly nostrils rises heavenwards and drifts to each quarter of the sky. Now we don't exactly know what the author of Matthew had in mind when he described the magi bringing gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But early Christian authors tried to interpret these gifts symbolically, saying that frankincense as a sacrificial incense foreshadows Jesus' priesthood, and myrrh as something that you would prepare dead bodies with foreshadows Jesus' death and resurrection. But again, the author of Matthew is ambiguous, so we don't exactly know what he had in mind. But next time you hear about frankincense and myrrh, you'll know what it is. Something for animal sacrifice, something for preparing dead bodies, and even preparing magical spells if you're so inclined to. As always, thanks for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you next time. Special thanks to Dr. Sarah Bond for suggesting this topic. Her article which inspired this episode is in the description below. If you'd like to support Religion for Breakfast, consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash religion for breakfast. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.